This message is brought to you by Jumpstart IT Academy. Get skilled in IT over a college degree. Go to FastTrack2IT.com and schedule yourself, schedule yourself for a 15-minute free consultation. And I'd be uh, excited to uh, basically go over your IT needs in terms of what you expect from IT and how you see yourself fitting into the IT industry to see if you're a good fit for uh, the course fast track to it.com or fast track to it where I launch professionals into the IT industry or I help mid-level professionals uh, strengthen their position in IT field to uh, gain um, a better salary or more money or I give people business ideas in which they can start in IT so they can uh, fulfill some of their dreams through information technology which is very prevalent in our society that being said one of my students asked me He's a graduate of Jumpstart IT Academy. And he asked me, could I do a video on 5G and how 5G will impact IT? And I decided to also kind of give a glimpse into understanding how it's going to impact society as a whole so that people have an understanding of what's coming. Now, you're going to see me looking down, and I have some notes right here. Talking about 5G is not something simple. It's not like I can just give you a quick explanation. So I'm going to be guided through these notes over here. So if I'm looking down, it's not like I'm uh, basically not paying attention or I didn't fall asleep. <laughs> I'm uh, paying attention. I'm just going to be looking at these notes so I can go over them and give you some really good information. So briefly, what is 5G network? Okay, so 5G network is the newest cellular network. So if you look at your cell phone, You'll see on like the, the upper part of your cell phone, it'll say something like 4G. And when, it, when it's not on Wi-Fi, it'll say something like 4G if you did not configure it so that it doesn't uh, put that information up there. But usually it'll say something like 4G. Now that 4G indicates the cellular network that's in use. Now, when 5G comes, basically it'll say 5G, okay? Like for example, I just had internet installed in a new place I moved to and basically it says uh, 5G if I wanna connect to the 5G network. So I don't know if it's traditional 5G that they're using, but it's a form of 5G, 5G that they're using. Maybe it's a uh, migration point. The migration point in terms of 5G when you're going from 4G to 5G isn't full 5G, but what it does, it is, they say 15 to 50% faster than traditional 4G networks. Now, the, what 5G is expected to do is this. 5G is expected to serve homes and offices. Now, right now, you have cables and telecommunication companies who are servicing homes and offices. All right, so just keep this in mind as we keep going. We're kind of going to build up. All right, so some of the major, what I want to go over, some of the major uses of 5G outside of mobile and cellular networks. One that we're going to be going into is the Internet of Things, okay? Another one is private networks. Another one is enterprise networks. And another one is critical communications. Now, when I'm talking about the Internet of Things, I'm talking about literally anything that connect, anything that has a sensor or something that can connect to the Internet. Uh, basically, 5G has so much bandwidth and, and power to basically take a whole lot of signals or, or devices on one network without eating up the entire bandwidth. And I'm putting this in layperson terms because I could go into a lot of details and language that you probably wouldn't remember. So I want to give you terms that you can remember. So just know that there's so much bandwidth that 5G using Internet of Things could handle all of those devices and the bandwidth that they're going to absorb. Now, private networks is basically like company networks or even your own private network in your home. If you're connecting to the internet from your home or if your smart TV connects to the internet, that's a private network. Okay, it's not public, meaning that it's not at like a library or something like that. So enterprise networks, you're talking about big, large networks like uh, let's say a, a Fortune 100 or 500 network. So these networks spans usually internationally. Okay, I'm not gonna go into details of how that happens, just understand that it does. Now, when you're talking about a cellular network, you're talking about cell towers. You talk about antennas, and you're talking about the distribution of signal from point A to point B to point Z. 
you know, A to Z basically, so that your signal reaches basically the destination that it was intended. So the cellular network is pretty much set up all over America and other countries as well, so that signal can be distributed and your conversation can basically take place when you're on the cell phone. And also you can use the cell phone and cellular network to search the internet, so it also handles data and video as well. So some of the major advantages of a 5G network so there's going to be higher data rates like we discussed. When I say more bandwidth, I'm talking about higher data rates. Now, when I say more bandwidth or higher data rates, I'm talking like, okay, if it's going at a, a hundred, you know, bits per second or a hundred, whatever megs, then it's going to go uh, basically a hundred times faster. Uh, that's what 5G is intended to do. So there's going to be a lower latency. And that essentially means without being technical, better response times. If you've ever had a cell phone call that just dropped, Think of that, okay? You're gonna have less of that, okay? Because 5G is so strong. Okay, let me kind of move this down here real quick. Okay, so where are the areas of opportunity? So when I look at 5G network, I look at it like any technology. I just look at it objectively. I'm not, I don't, I don't own any stock in any company that produces any products or services from 5g so i'm just going to give you my straight opinion based on my experience in dealing with technology for 20 plus years okay and i've had to evaluate technology you know since i was a teenager so i'm more than well equipped to give you a professional or technological opinion that will suit you and help you uh, gain a working knowledge or uh, make certain uh, decisions that you need to make in terms of if you plan on studying an area or an area of 5G or seeking an opportunity within 5G. It should give you some form of information that should be helpful to you, in other words. Okay, so the areas of opportunity that I see are equipment, equipment manufacturers, meaning companies that are producing equipment for 5G networks because the 5g equipment is going to be different than the 4g equipment now there's going to be a, just like any other technology there's going to be a migration point now uh, the areas of opportunity is going to be for installers and implementers meaning these are the technicians who are actually out there once the equipment is purchased they're actually in implementing the equipment installing the equipment replacing the 4g equipment are assisting uh, a telecommunication company with migrating from 4G to 5G. Now, there's gonna be plenty of work for that because all the 4G equipment is gonna need to be replaced because it's a different technology. So uh, what we call that is basically uh, a, a network refresh. So this, but, but in, in, in terms of this, just understand when I say migration, I mean that this exchange from 4G to 5G will be done in parallel meaning that you're gonna have 5G, you have 4G equipment that's going to work with 5G equipment to make that transition smooth. And it doesn't have to be some big time dollar investment or monetary investment for these companies to transition from 4G to 5G. So there's just gonna be opportunities for people who install the, uh, the 5G equipment. So there you go. Also maintenance operations, uh, technicians or engineers. Now these are the people that once the installers have implemented the, the 5G equipment, these are the people who are monitoring the equipment. Now there's gonna be sensors inside, it, inside of this equipment and so there's gonna be people in, you know, I guess uh, wireless or 5G operation networks who are going to be monitoring the networks so that if they go down, I'm sure there's gonna be a level of redundancy. So there's, all, there's gonna be architecture built in it so that it's designed to function in a manner that 4G does. So they're not going to lose any principles of minimum downtime or anything of that nature. So uh, when you think of 5G, just think improvement, it's going to get better. Okay. So what are some business opportunities? Well, I would say app developers and people who are developing applications. I say, I think because the applications that are going to be developed are going to be more robust. You're going to have applications that can run faster, that can handle more data and more uh, of video. Uh, just more content, uh, mainly because if there's more bandwidth available on 5G, that means that the, you have more capabilities um, as an app developer to add more, uh, I just say beef up your application on the front end. You don't have to actually have a, an application that on the back end, uh, it, it can handle a, a heavy amount or a heavy load of bandwidth. You can actually have some of that uh, transaction 
uh, take place within the application or even have it send it to the back end, but the, because the 5G network can handle it. So you can have servers that are uh, running on the back end. And when I say servers, I'm just kind of giving you insight to understand that 5G is going to end up replacing traditional uh, n data networks, meaning private networks or enterprise networks, because that's how uh, that's how powerful it is in terms of bandwidth and its its ability basically to send data from point A to point B. Now, let's see here. So uh, it's going to be better user experiences. That's essentially what I'm saying. So on the, if, if you're an app developer, you're going to be able to create a better application. So there's going to be a lot more opportunity for app developers. OK, now there's also going to be opportunity with uh, 5G service providers. Now, I know that there's telecommunications already out there and it takes a large capital investment to basically buy this equipment, this 5G equipment. But I think that there may be opportunities like when when ISPs start to become popular. Now, we know some of the big dogs like IT or excuse me, AT&T or, or Sprint and, you know, Verizon, all those big dogs. We know those big dogs are in the race. Right. But there were also small little ISPs that were still able to get some of that market share of that telecommunication services and connect people to the internet and what they would do is they built that business and they would sell it to like an AT&T because essentially what you're doing is you're taking some of that market share and if AT&T wants a piece of that market share they're either going to pay you a, a, a you know some money to have that market share or uh, you're going to sell it to them so they can have it so I think there will probably be businesses that can be developed to connect people to the 5G network possibility i don't know but i'm thinking there might be so but i do know that in terms of antenna developers people who are manufacturers people who develop uh antennas uh they're going to get a lot of business they're going to get a lot of business because of, because of a technology that's used called uh, mimo multiple input multiple output uh that's the antenna setup or arrangement design that's going to allow uh a more the more robust signal that we're talking about and the additional bandwidth. Now, I think, and I said this before, the 5G service providers and also the technicians and the installers. Okay, so new applications and new uh, hardware. So I mentioned the Internet of Things. Okay, now when I say the Internet of Things, I just just to break it down and it's just functional perspective. When I say Internet of Things, I mean like anything that connect can connect to the Internet. So when I, when I say new hardware applications, I mean that if there's anything that can connect to the Internet, it will be able to connect to the Internet because they have now have the bandwidth to be able to handle those devices. So when I say more devices can join the Internet because there's more bandwidth available, that means the cost of bandwidth should be reduced, which is why additional bandwidth can uh, take place with 5G. So not only the cost for basically the bandwidth, but also the amount of devices that can utilize the bandwidth. Okay, so when I say new hardware and applications, I'm talking about web connected uh, self-driving cars because there's gonna be a lot of data that's gonna be sent from this cars and, the, and, it, and it can't be connected to wires, obviously, it's a car, right? So that data is gonna be able to be sent through the 5G wireless uh, or cellular network. I would just I wouldn't even call it a cellular network anymore because it's going to revolutionize um, communications as a whole in terms of um, basically blurring the lines between wireless and wired, meaning that this wireless network can handle more bandwidth than wired networks. That's that's essentially what's going to happen. Uh, the reason that's going to happen is because everything is going to be able to connect to the network and that's the the functional goal so if that's the functional goal for everything or anything that's possibly can connect to the network if that's the functional goal then the investment and the time the research and development needs to be in a wireless technology that can do that and it looks like 5g is either the technology that can do that or the technology that's going to propel that functionality or ability in the future so you're also going to have robots or aircraft that's controlled remotely because 5G will be able to be able to send that data and allow a, a controller. Um, so let's say some controller and some operation center be able to uh, basically send data through the 5G network to the device, such as an airplane and basically control the airplane remotely. So there's going to be sensors that connect to various versatile applications. That's the Internet of Things. Okay. 
So let's see here. So I also wanted to look at competition, like what's going to change? Because usually when there's a new technology, there's some level of disruption. There's some level of market disruption. Now, it looks like the cable industry is going to be impacted the most. Now, when I say the cable industry is going to be impacted the most, I mean this. If people are using cable or if a cable provider is connecting Internet to someone's home or office, well, with 5G, if they're want if they want higher speeds and especially if the price structure for 5g is lower than cable then no one's going to use cable it's just going to be outdated it's, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to become a thing of the past that someone would use cable to connect to the internet because why would you use cable when the lower cost is 5g or the better speeds is uh, the 5g network so cable is going to be impacted the most and one of the things that I thought about when I looked at 5G and sort of did my brief research on it is that Time Warner, I believe right now, is going through a merger. And I thought that Time, Mer Time Warner went through a merger because they basically had a, um, an incident that took place during the Super Bowl about a couple of years ago where uh, I think some indecent information or images were shown on their, on, on their feed through, through the video. I think that's what happened. It was anyway, it was something very controversial. And it literally like within three or four days, we were told, you know, through the media that Time Warner was merging with a with a particular company. Now, I thought that that was the trigger point for it, it may have been the trigger point, but that's that that's not the complete strategy behind it. I think 5G was a strategy behind it because remember Time Warner is a cable company. And if 5G is on the way, it's only a matter of time before uh, Time Warner or other cable companies are either going to be merged with other with other telecommunication companies or they're going to go out of business. So I think Time Warner saw the writing on the wall for cable because of 5G and they pretty much threw their hands up because they can't compete in that market. They can't they, they can no longer compete in the Internet market as a cable provider with 5G. OK, so. I, I think that Time Warner anticipated that their market share was going to be basically absorbed by some company that implements 5G and provides the services to consumers and just basically just swallows up all of their, their um, revenue, their revenue stream for Internet services. So traditional wireless organizations will suffer if they don't find a way to adapt. OK, um, the equipment manufacturers for traditional like there's companies like Cisco that makes traditional wireless um, devices. I think that the traditional wireless um, networks are going to go away. Like when when wireless first started, I implemented wireless for a sheriff's department and I allowed the sheriff's department through connecting antennas to be able to connect to uh, basically their corporate um, servers through Wi-Fi and that was very innovative and it was about, I don't know, 17 years ago that I did that. Um, but I just think that those who provide traditional wireless is, it's a thing of, the, it's gonna be a thing of the past. Why 5G is gonna be so prevalent that why would somebody think of uh, setting up their own wireless network when they can just tap into a big telecommunication service provider that provides 5G? It just it just makes more sense. The, the the infrastructure is there. All you have to do is make a call, set up the services, and it'll, I think it'll be a reduction of cost for companies who set up their own Wi-Fi networks. So I think what companies will do is get rid of their own internal Wi-Fi networks and start using 5G. That's what I think they'll do. It will reduce their overall total cost of ownership for their wireless networks and their communication um, functions that they have in their in their operations. So. I think uh, Wi-Fi technicians and engineers are going to be impacted. So you, the, if you see like there's like a Cisco Wi-Fi or there's different, uh, I think, Wi-Fi certifications that you can study. Now, I think those people are going to be impacted because if Wi-Fi itself, the traditional Wi-Fi is going to go away because of 5G, then you don't need the traditional installers or implementers and maintainers. You don't need them. Um, you're there so those those people who implement 5g they're going to have to basically consider something else or move over or not 5g but traditional wireless networks those people who do that need to consider moving over to 5g or moving over to some other technology so what i see futuristically i see uh, neighborhoods and organizations will use 5g and reduce their internet costs by creating an economy of scale what does that mean that means that Right now for your HOA, right? In other words, just think of 5G as 
turning the internet into a commodity in that our utility. So you know how you pay your uh, trash through HOA and things of that nature. I'm not saying that you do, but in some cases you can trash water. Um, there are certain fees that you, you can pay for. Uh, if you if you live in an HOA neighborhood, you can pay for services such as getting the, the HOA handles the external roofing and you handle the internal. And there you also get access to a recreation center or through a pool or a workout center. So I think that what's going to happen is the neighborhood, the HOA is going to basically tap into or have a an access point for the 5G network. And I think that neighborhoods will be charging a, a small portion for internet access. So I don't think you'll have internet equipment in your house anymore. I think that when you do have equipment in your house, it won't be just you. It'll just be you tapping into the 5G network that is pretty much um, bandwidth given to a particular uh, neighborhood. That's that's just what I'm seeing uh, futuristically without even going into any deep research, just visualizing the possibilities that could happen. So I think uh, telecommuting, like people who work remotely, I think that will become uh, even more common than it already is. I think that the cost of the Wi-Fi, the 5G network, I think the, the pricing strategy is going to be that they're going to introduce a low price Initially, I think they're going to have to increase the price to recoup the cost it took for them to buy the infrastructure, do the research and development to deploy it. And I think what's going to happen is once you get a large percentage of people using 5G, I think that that's when the cost is going to go down again. So these are just my thoughts. Uh, I think the, inter the Internet of Things is going to take off. I think that's going to take off. So I think you, if, if you're a business minded, if you're an innovator, if you're a creator, and you enjoy technology, I think you should start researching the Internet of Things to see what products or services that you can develop. OK, so I think smart TVs will get even smarter. That's just my honest opinion. So wh who are some of the major players in the 5G realm right now? I just kind of took a quick uh, inventory of who I thought was going to be some of the major players. Qualcomm, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint and T-Mobile. And also Nokia. These are all famous, famously known telecommunication companies. So when will 5G be deployed? Well, we're looking at April of 2019 is what people are saying. And these are going to what I assume to be the early adopters. OK. And in 2020, I think that's when you're going to actually see some of the real uh, rollouts of 5G. And it's going to become more obvious uh, the, with the initial traction that it's building that you're going to be able to see it publicly now it's not just going to be something that people are going to be curious about or they're reading in magazines about so here's some of my final thoughts i think 5g will ultimately change the way businesses do business and it will change the way consumers consume that's what i think that it'll, it'll do um, innovators to me will only be limited by their own imaginations and i think that because they're going to be a plethora of opportunities to create things that were previously unmanaged or unimagined. And because you're literally at a point where your imagination is unlimited in terms of what you can connect to the internet. So it's simply based on what you can imagine that could connect to the internet. Okay. So start using your imagination. If you're a creator, if you're an innovator and you're into creating products and services, and you'll pretty much have a playground available to you when 5G uh, comes out. So I would start thinking about opportunity right now. So that's my thoughts on 5G, how it's going to impact information technology and how it's going to impact society as a whole. I hope this has been helpful to you. Again, this is Mr. C. Johnson 007. And I wanted to show you basically 5G and what it's going to do in society, how it's going to shake things up. And I am coming from Jumpstart IT Academy. Get skilled in IT over a college degree. Go to FastTrackToIT.com and sign up for our flagship course, Fast Track to IT, where I show you how to get launched in information technology. And this is the Jumpstart IT Academy. We get skilled in IT over a college degree. Talk to you in the next video. Like, subscribe, and share.